it famously claims to be the banker to every Indian. But did you know that India's largest bank, the State Bank of India, started its journey on 27th January 1921 as a central bank for the British Indian Empire. It was called the Imperial Bank of India then and it was a result of the merger of the three presidency banks, the Bank of Bengal, the Bank of Bombay and the Bank of Madras. It was a landmark in Indian economic history for it was the last of the many unsuccessful attempts by the British at establishing a central bank in India. The story starts in the 18th century when the British East India Company was expanding their possessions in India. During this time, no uniform measure of value existed in British India. Gold and silver coins were in circulation but they differed in denomination and intrinsic value throughout India. Out of this confusion, there arose a demand for uniform coinage and in 1806, the silver rupee was officially accepted by the East India Company as the standard coin. In 1861, the Paper Currency Act vested the sole right to issue notes with the government. Meanwhile, as early as 1773, Warren Hastings, the Governor-General of British India, had set up the General Bank of Bengal and Bihar. It was a central bank of sorts and it was to standardize the rupee, facilitate revenue collection for the government and render foreign remittance services to private merchants. But it shut down in 1775. In 1913, one of the greatest economists of the 20th century, John Maynard Keynes, published his landmark paper, Indian Currency and Finance. He argued for the merger of the three presidency banks into the Imperial Bank of India, which would handle India's commercial and central banking. But the outbreak of World War I in 1914 delayed its creation. At the end of the war, there was renewed international pressure on the British Indian government, especially from the International Finance Conference, which had been set up to reset the global economic order. The conference, at its meeting in Brussels in 1920, recommended that, in nations where there is no central bank of issue, one should be established. Finally, the Imperial Bank of India was set up in 1921 and through a royal charter was appointed as the sole banker to the government. It was entrusted with the entire treasury balances. Moreover, it also acted as a banker's bank and most of the leading banks in India deposited a portion of their cash balance with it. The ball had been set rolling and the Imperial Bank of India was to open 100 new branches across the country in five years. In 1933, Sir Badridas Goenka became the first Indian to be appointed as the chairman of the Imperial Bank of India. In the meantime, central banking had become even more complex and was to be kept separate from commercial banking to avoid a conflict of interest. As a result, the Reserve Bank of India was established in 1935 to take over central banking functions and the Imperial Bank retained its commercial operations. After India's independence in 1947, the Government of India nationalized the Imperial Bank of India in 1955 and renamed it the State Bank of India. Today, it is India's largest bank with over 22,000 branches and 44 crore customers. <laughs>